Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had derived expressions for ISP and non-dimensional thrust for uh, a case with the afterburner switched on and for the flow through the nozzle, we had assumed that the flow is optimally expanded through the nozzle. Now let us take the other case wherein the flow through the nozzle is a choke flow. Okay. And the efficiencies are all one, and uh, we'll see how this uh, case looks like. So, we had done a very similar analysis without the afterburner being switched on, and we had got this expression for non-dimensional thrust as F by m dot a a naught. <coughs> This was the expression that we had for the non-dimensional thrust for a choke flow through the nozzle with all efficiencies being 1 and uh, <coughs> this is the same expression that we will have with the afterburner switched on also only these quantities change. Okay. So, for afterburner Switched on, we need T7 by T0, and in the previous class, we had seen that this is nothing but theta AB by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M7 square, right. We know that for a choke flow through the nozzle, what is it that we know? M7 must be equal to. 1. So, substituting it here, we will get that it this is the expression for T7 by uh, T0 and similarly, we need expression for P7 by P0. When we cascade, we will get this 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m7 square, right, into pi t pi c okay. This is the expression that we get. Now, I also know that I can write pi t as tau t to the power of gamma by right and I will substitute this because all of them will then be raised to the same power. So, it will be easier for me to handle it. I will get 
and I also know that m7 is equal to 1. So, substituting this I will get So, we have got the uh, pressure ratios also, then for getting we have got this ratio we need to get this quantity ok. Just like in the previous case uh, we will get this by looking at mass flow rate through the nozzle. Considering mass flow rate through the nozzle, we get that m dot a into 1 plus f plus f a b in this case must be equal to rho 7 v 7 a 7. Now again we can use uh, what we had done earlier that f plus f a b is very much less than 1 then I will get m dot a is equal to rho 7 I can write it as p 7 by r t 7 into uh, V7 is A7 into M7 ok. This I know is 1 ok for the choke nozzle. So, I get A7 if I write it as gamma r t 7 I will get p 7 into under root gamma a 7 divided by ok. Now again uh, we multiply both sides by a naught So, I get what I was looking for m dot a naught is equal to p 7 under root gamma a naught is again gamma r t naught. So, I will use that So, I can cancel out r and r here and I will be left with gamma p 7 a 7 t 7. Now, if I divide both sides by 
P naught by P naught A7 you get the expression that we wanted m, m dot a a naught divided by p naught a 7 is equal to gamma into p 7 by p naught okay. and we know the values of both of them P7 by P0 and T0 by T7. So, if we substitute it, we will get this is the expression that we get. Now, we know all the three quantities that we were looking for. So, I can write uh, f by m dot a a naught as equal to under root uh, t 7 by t naught which is nothing but 2 theta a b by minus m naught plus p naught a 7 by uh, m dot a a naught that is 1 by gamma into P 7 by P naught minus 1 that is the same quantity ok. This is the expression that we get for f by m dot a a naught for an choke flow condition okay, with the after burner switched on. You can also uh, similarly get an expression for ISP only thing that needs to be changed is that f by m dot a a naught is this expression right. The, all the other things in the ISP by a naught expression that we derived earlier holds good. So, you just need to change the f by m dot a a naught expression. So, we have now got both things that is for uh, an optimally expanded flow and for a choke nozzle. Choke nozzle is the more general case and optimally expanded flow as I said is a very special case of choke nozzle wherein the exit pressure is equal to the ambient pressure. Okay. Now, uh, just like uh, what we had done earlier that is look at uh, typical calculations and see what happens with the after burner turned on ok. I will use uh, the same set of numbers that I had used for a choked uh, flow in the nozzle. So, we will keep the uh, flow in the nozzle as choked and use the same set of parameters and find out what happens with uh, f by m dot a a naught and ISP 
with the after burner turned on. So, first is take off that is m naught is equal to 0 and at eleven kilometer altitude m naught being equal to point eight. So, we look at uh, firstly f by m dot a a naught and then we look at ISP and SFC, SFC is in kg per kg r and we look at two ratios that is and And we look at two conditions here, one no A B that is no after burner and then the other one with after burner. Again here same thing Now, we are using all these parameters the same. So, I will get f by m dot a naught as two point two seven and two point one five similar to the last case that we had looked at now let's look Yes, uh, both cases being for the choke nozzle. So, let us look at what happens now uh, with the after burner being switched on. All this is for a choke nozzle. Now, let us look at what happens to these values when we switch on the after burner. With after burner, this goes to a fairly large value of 6.07 sorry 3.67 and uh, ISP reduces to 29.5 and this increases to 1.2 and similarly this goes to 
1.37 and this ratio of f by m dot a a naught that is the non dimensional thrust how much do we get an increase from with the after burner being switched on to without it this ratio would be 1.62 for this case and 1.79 or 1.8 for the second case okay and sfc ratio is what we need to pay to get this kind of ratio if you look at this okay what we see is that we need to really uh, shell out a lot more fuel if we have to get a uh, thrust increment by this much if we have to get in this case uh, 60 to 80 percent thrust increase we have to spend something like 50 to 80 percent on the SFC right. So, it is a very large uh, SFC increase compared to what you get for the thrust. You can also put it the other way that if the same thing was done let us say if we had uh, if you remember our discussions wherein we talked about uh, the limitation on turbine inlet temperatures we said turbine inlet temperatures cannot be raised because uh, of material considerations and therefore we limit it by using excess air. Now suppose we were uh, free to increase this to a larger value then the same kind of thrust increase remember turbine inlet temperature is in the hands you can uh, give the uh, more fuel to the main burner or less fuel but there is an overall limit right that can be changed within certain limits if we were allowed to increase the turbine inlet temperature the same kind of uh, what you see as f by m dot a ratio could have been obtained with same can be obtained with same ratio can be obtained with thirty five per cent if turbine inlet temperatures could have been increased So, what we are saying is you are spending 80 percent increase in SFC while the same thrust increment could have been got if you were allowed to increase the turbine inlet temperature. This shows the uh, need for you know better materials wherein we can go for a larger turbine inlet temperature and wherein you can save on fuel. If you want excess thrust you can increase the turbine inlet temperature and get the same excess thrust at a much lower cost. How, why does this happen? Why do we say that if we increase the turbine inlet temperature, if we are allowed to increase the turbine inlet temperature, the SFC would reduce. Whereas, uh, if you switch on the after burner, you see that SFC increase for the same thrust increment is more. Why does this happen? The, 
exhaust velocity is become higher. That's the one that gives the higher thrust. No, that's not the reason. What I'm asking you is, if you look at the two cases, SFC increase with the afterburner switched on is much more for the same thrust increment than the case if we take wherein we are allowed to increase the turbine inlet temperature. Turbine inlet temperature you could have got the same with a 35 percent increase whereas you are spending around 80 percent uh, increase in SFC to account for the same thrust in increment. Why should this happen is my question. Why should burning fuel in the afterburner be more expensive? No. If you uh, go back to our discussions wherein we talked about uh, the need for the afterburner, I talked about something known as availability. Right? If you add heat at a very high pressure, then you have a opportunity to expand for more than if you add heat at a lower, much lower pressure. What we are doing in the afterburner is we are, we have passed the turbine where the flow has expanded already and the pressures are very low and there we are trying to add heat which means that the opportunity to expand is smaller and therefore we find that the SFC will increase because you are now expanding from a lower pressure to a even lower pressure and but you are spending more fuel to increase that temperature okay. okay. Now let us look at the next method of uh, getting thrust augmentation that we had discussed earlier that is water methanol injection. Now, if you remember our earlier discussions, uh, I had said that uh, you can add water in the main combustor and that will, because the flow at the exit of the combustor is choked, it will act as though it is increasing the pressure inside the combustor okay. and uh, we use water for that. Now, water at very low temperatures that are encountered at higher altitudes would tend to freeze. So, therefore, uh, we need to add some additives to make sure that it does not freeze now that is why methanol is added and also methanol provides the additional heat that is required to uh, increase the temperature of water from ambient to the uh, turbine inlet temperatures. Okay. So, let us look at how uh, this system works. So, we are going to consider the case where water and methanol are injected in the main combustor okay. Now, what is our uh, non dimensional thrust equation that is for optimally expanded flow
and eta being one. Okay, so this is the expression that we had for non-dimensional thrust for these conditions, right? Now, if we are injecting water and methanol in the main combustor, I need to add a term here. Okay, it is not just one plus f; it should be f plus. I'll call this f w. Whereas, where f w is nothing but m dot mass flow rate of water plus methanol divided by mass flow rate of air. Okay. So, this is the expression that we have. Now, here in this case, I cannot say that combining these two, it is much less than 1 because we will see that you can increase this to something like 30 percent of the overall flow. So, I cannot neglect this part compared to 1. So, I will have to retain it and do all the rest of the algebra. Again we need expressions for T 7 by T naught and M 7 by M naught. Okay. Now, in this case, if you look at uh, the expressions that we are derived for M7 by M0, okay, uh, we had got earlier M7 by M0 as equal to theta naught minus 1 and T 7 by T naught as equal to theta B by tau C theta naught, right. Both these expressions do not change. The only change in this case comes about when we are looking at the compressor turbine power balance. If you are adding water methanol in the combustor, all the other expressions, these expressions remain the same. The only change will come in uh, the compressor turbine power balance. We will look at how that happens. So, I will say no changes here to the case without water methanol injection. Okay. So, let us look at the compressor turbine power balance. Okay. Now, as I had said if you have, uh, if you add water in the combustor, there are two things that happens. One is the flow is choked at the exit of the combustor. If the flow is choked, then we know that it is only a function of upstream conditions. Upstream, you are increasing the, increasing the mass flow rate, 
right you are adding water and methanol you are increasing the mass flow rate which means that the pressure upstream will also have to increase. So, what it essentially does is increases the pressure ratio across the turbine okay. it acts as though the compressor pressure ratio is higher fine. So, this combustion chamber pressure increases and therefore, we find that it acts as though the compressor pressure ratio is increased. Now, earlier we had a compressor pressure ratio of pi c okay. Now, which was nothing but P T 3 by P T 2. Now, because of the addition of water and methanol in the main combustor, this will get changed to this will become I C naught into 1 plus F plus F W divided by 1 plus F. That is this is the new compressor pressure ratio. It is uh, the earlier compressor pressure ratio excuse me. It is the earlier compressor pressure ratio that you have multiplied by the increased mass flow rate divided by the earlier mass flow rate. So, this is a new compressor pressure ratio that you will get. So, if you look at the uh, equation for the turbine compressor power balance, what you will get is m dot a C p because this pressure ratio across the compressor has changed it acts as though the temp uh, the pressure ratio you will find that you can also express this as in terms of tau c naught right and uh, if we do the analysis if we do this analysis what we will get is the expression for tau t as equal to earlier it was uh, 1 minus theta naught by theta b into tau c minus 1. This was the earlier expression. Now, there is an additional mass flow rate that is going through. You, if you remember, we had neglected 1 plus f which would be in the denominator. Now, there is an additional mass flow rate that is going through and that cannot be neglected. So, you will have 1 plus f plus f w here okay. and uh, the tau c part pi c was earlier different. Now, the new tau c would be new tau c would be equal to tau c naught into 1 plus f plus f w divided by 1 plus f
okay. So this is the expression that you will have for tau c and if you plug it back in you will get the new expression for tau t. So you will get finally tau t is equal to 1 minus theta naught by theta b into tau c naught 1 plus f plus f w divided by 1 plus f. So what really happens is uh, the actual value of tau t because you have increased the mass flow rate and because you have increased the pressure upstream of the turbine, uh, both the pressure and the temperature at the end of the turbine would be higher than compared to without water methanol injection which means that uh, if you expand this flow through the nozzle you have more scope for expansion as well as the temperature at the end of expansion would be much higher therefore you get a larger thrust. Now obviously you have to pay for it so ISP has got to be higher in this case why should ISP be higher? Water has to be evaporated. Yes water we are injecting as a spray this needs to be water which is a T naught needs to be increased to the turbine inlet temperature so you need to obviously burn fuel to do this so, so we are adding yes but still uh, the latent heat you have to provide for no at least to bring it up to tt3 you need to provide uh, for it so this will uh, mean that there is an increase in isp so if you take a look at isp by a not expression it will change to q by CPT naught into earlier we were neglecting this part 1 plus F plus FW we have to have earlier we did not have this uh, FW and we said F is very much smaller so we neglected it now you have that part into theta B minus tau C theta naught plus L prime into F W into F by okay. Now L prime is nothing but L by C P T naught where L is heat absorbed by water to rise its temperature from a liquid at at T naught to gas at T T 3 then that remaining part is accounted for in this portion okay this is where you are taking it from T T 3 to the turbine inlet temperature T T 4 this part accounts for the latent heat of water that you need to supply for raising its temperature from T naught to turbine inlet temperature okay. Sir, you have to account for methanol also no? 
methanol we are in this, adding yeah i have to say here in this analysis we have looked at only water do not account it for methanol you can account for it uh, by suitably changing the l value okay l value uh, in that case will get reduced so uh, the isp part uh, will be a little higher okay now uh, if we were to do the same analysis as we had done earlier that is make a table and look at what happens with increasing percentage of uh, methanol injection how much is the thrust increment that we get and what is the cost that we need to pay Uh, we will use the same set of values that we had used for the choke nozzle that is uh, theta b is equal to 5.55 this is at 11 kilometer and m naught is equal to 0 0.8. tau c naught would be 2.03 and uh, therefore theta naught would be 1.128 and f let me keep it as 0 0.03 a naught is equal to 294 meters per second okay if we have this then for varying fractions of fw we can get tau c and as I said only things that change are in that expression are tau c and tau t So, you have 0 then it is 2.03 and this is 12 and this would be 0 0.8, 2.46 which was what we had seen earlier. Now, I can put this in kilo Newtons. Uh, so, I will get 41.8. Now, if we increase it to something like 0.2 percent, okay, then compressor pressure ratio will rise and correspondingly the temperature ratio will rise. It will act as though the compressor is giving out air at 14.5 bar I mean 14.5 pressure ratio whereas the compressor was giving out at 12 it acts as though it is giving out at 14.5 and correspondingly this will also increase and you get a higher thrust but your ISP will be 
reduced and if you further increase it to something like 0.3 this goes to 2.18 and the compressor pressure ratio increases this increases also so we see that as the f by m dot a a naught increases uh, we are also getting an decrease in isp this is because we need to add more heat here to increase the temperature okay okay then i'll stop here in the next class we we'll look at uh, what happens if we have efficiencies to deal with in the uh, turbojet okay thank you